all our heads as we need to. Lord God, we give you thanks for your grace, for your salvation, for your word, for the faith that we have, for the promises that you make. We celebrate, Lord God, your grace today. We pray that you would bless our meditation and your word. And help us to understand the nature of true rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brother is my sister. How many of you are tired? Yeah, I got it. So, sleep number has promised me a new bed if I advertise sleep number beds here today. So, I'm going to be pitching for a sleep number bed. And, uh, Want a 20% discount? Come talk to me after the service. I'd be glad to sell you a sleep number bed. No, that's not what I want. Okay. Rest is one of those things that seems like that when you need it the most, it's when you can't get it. Right? We're going to spend some time talking over the next four weeks about the nature of rest. Today I want to start by talking about Rest the Reformation. There's all these things that we celebrate on Reformation Day, these teachings of Scripture that had gotten clouded over centuries by the teachings of mankind that had kind of warped and changed what God's Word really said. Teachings like teachings like the grace of God, salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. <laughs> teachings like like the priesthood of all believers, that all of us are priests before the Lord God and serve Him by our lives, and that's why all of us should have a Bible to be able to read the Bible as we want, because we are priests just as much as the pastor or the priest. Teachings like the vocation of mankind, that God calls each of us into certain aspects of our lives, and no matter what we do, we do it to the glory of God. Not that some professions are more lofty than others. But really, the Reformation is not so much about teaching as it is about rest. Martin Luther uh, was tired. He, he did everything that he could, and he could not be at peace. He could not be at rest. His mind was bothered. His mind was running. He could not. He just could not find any sort of way to be at peace with the Almighty God. He, uh, he wrote somewhere, I, I just remember reading, I don't remember where, he talked about if any monk could have ever won salvation by the way that he lived his life, it would have been him, and he could not do it. He was not at peace with him. And he beat himself, and he beat himself, to try and beat the devil out of him. And he couldn't do it. No matter how hard he tried to be a child of God and be at peace with God, he could not find peace. And it was in that lack of rest, that lack of peace, that the Reformation came. And he began to understand that mankind is saved not by what they do or what they don't do, but saved by the love, by the mercy, by the grace of the Almighty God found in Jesus Christ. And it's that rest so we're going to spend some time talking about today. The sort of the themes of our sermon are going to be called breathe. You know the exercise, you know, when you get yourself wound up and, it, and, and stressed out or anxious about something, you take a step back and you take a deep what? Breath. Calm yourself. If I can just calm down for a minute, then I'll go back into the fray and deal with whatever it is that i got to deal with. But i got to take a step back and take a... Just stop and breathe. We're not going to be talking about some sort of exercise to help us that way. We're going to talk about an actual breathing out of something, and breathing in something, to bring us rest, to bring us peace. And today we're going to talk about something called the Sabbath. Right. Sabbath, Old Testament thing, we read about it just a moment ago. Uh, on the seventh, God created the world in six days by the power of his word. Out of nothing, he created everything. And on the seventh day, he rested. The Hebrew word for rest is Sabbath. So he Sabbath. He stopped. He rested, right? And from 
from then on, he told the people of Israel, I want you to observe the Sabbath, which was 6 p.m. on Friday to 6 p.m. on Saturday. And on that day, you read what they were supposed to do. What were they supposed to do? Not work. They take time off and stop running around after all the things that they have to do. You all have, they had their to-do list just as much as you have your to-do list. You're running around. I got to take care of this. I got to go over here. I got this here and I got to do. I have to mess with this. I have to fix that. He said, no. On the Sabbath, you're going to stop. You're going to gather together with your family. And you're going to stop working. Stop fussing. Stop going. Focus on your relationship with God. They, they wouldn't they would eat food that had been prepared the day before so that someone didn't have to be fussing over cooking. They would gather together and focus again on the things that were important. It was a time of worship. It was a time of prayer. It was a time to remember the promises of God, to teach children about what God said. It was recentering the people of Israel around what was important, and that was their relationship with God. Now, you and I don't have to observe the Sabbath the same way that the Old Testament Israelites did. That passed along with a lot of the other Old Testament regulations. I don't have to wear an ephod with an urim and a thummim and a turban and a, what was the thing called, diadem. You and I don't have to bring a goat to church on Sunday or on Sabbath and slaughter a goat, right? Yay. <laughs> Right? <laughs> you don't have to build a booth on the corner of our roof and live in it once a year. But all that went away when the Messiah. I'm going to read to you from the book of Hebrews here just now, where the writer to the Hebrews talks about what part of the Sabbath remains for you and me today. What part of rest remains for you and me today? This is what he writes Hebrews chapter 4, 9 to 11. This is what is written. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall, fall by following their example of disobedience. I'm going to reread that one line, verse 10 again. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their own works. So the specific regulations of the Sabbath, that it has that from 6 p.m. on Friday to 6 p.m. on Saturday, you can't do any work and you should, uh, shouldn't do any, that has gone away. But what remains is that you and I need to enter God's what? God's rest. What remains really is a relationship with the Almighty God where we know that God has forgiven us, God has taken away our sins, God claims us to be his own children. Focusing on our relationship with our God and stop fussing and fighting about all the things that in this world that we have to do. Got my to do list, I got to take care of this, I got to fix that, I got to put up that, I got to do this. And God says, No, you stop, and I need you to remember my promises, my love, my salvation, my forgiveness. The truth is that that's hard to do, right? Just honestly, how many of you, while you were sitting here in God's house, thinking about your relationship with God and confessing your sins and hearing His God's word, how many of you thought about something that you had to do this afternoon? Mm -hmm. To actually have our mind rest, <laughs> to have our mind stop with all of that out there, and to think about. What our God yeah, says, what I our God does, what our God says. Why did you do that? I, I can't help but think about the lesson that we read just a moment ago when Jesus is talking to his disciples and says, if you're going to come after me, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to have a relationship with me, you have to deny your... <clears throat> Maybe that's part of the key. Is that when it comes to actually finding rest, one of the things we have to do is breathe out ourselves. My list, my goals, my problems, 
my this, my that, I have to do this, I gotta take care of that, I'm responsible for this, if I don't do this, then this is an end. Focus, inwardly focusing on self, and Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. To breathe out self and say, this world, this life, my life is not about me, but it is about, it is about my God. Breathe in, then, a relationship with God and say, my God loves me, my God forgave me, my God gave me peace through the death of Jesus Christ, my God has sacrificed for me, and therefore there is nothing in this world that I need to fuss over, fight over, worry about, be anxious about, because I know that it is not me, it is So often we become obsessed with ourselves. Not, not like people. But more along the lines of everything revolves around me that I am responsible. I have to. I have to. The Sabbath says, reminds us that our lives are not about ourselves, but our lives are really about a relationship with the Almighty God who loves us. Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is not just resting and sleeping and taking a nap. What Sabbath is is a, is, is a connection to the Almighty God where I know God's promises and I know God's love and I am at peace, I am at rest in my heart, in my mind, in my soul because I know that my God has promised that he will watch over me. I know that my God has promised that he has forgiven me. I know that my God has promised that he will never leave. that Sabbath. I know that my God is with me, that he loves you, that he will watch over you, and he never deny me. But my life, then, is really about my connection to the Almighty God, and not my to-do list. And not my mission and my goals, but God's mission and God's mission. And we need to make, we need to really be good, to make every effort to enter that. That's what Sunday morning is supposed to do, right? I don't know if it always does, but that's what it's supposed to do. We gather here in God's house to hear God's promises, confess our sins, hear God's forgiveness, uh, fellowship with our brothers and sisters who, who we love and care for us and we care for them, to teach our children, to be reminded of the promises of God. It's supposed to bring peace to our hearts, peace to our souls, peace to our minds, peace to our hearts. Because we know who our God is and what he thinks of us. So that I can go out into the world for the next week and face the to-do list. Or the responsibility list. Or whatever we want to call it. I wonder though, if it's not something that we should focus on more often. Whenever we get ourselves stressed out. Whenever we get ourselves anxious or worried or bothered. By that person over there, or that thing over there, to just take a step back and breathe. Breathe out me. Breathe out my this and my that. Breathe in the love of God, the power of God, the peace that we have with God, the Sabbath. I think that's eventually where Martin Luther ended up. He tried to become righteous before the Lord God, but he did not. He began to realize that salvation was not dependent on what he did or what he didn't do or how good of a Christian he was or how much he beat himself or any of those things. He began to realize that he wasn't really even the one in charge of his own life. The number of people who wanted Martin Luther dead. Right? How many people want you dead? None that I know of. <laughs> well, and he could rest at peace and secure, not because there was an army waiting, but because he was in God's hand. He didn't have to worry about his salvation. He didn't worry about his safety. He didn't worry about anything because he knew that he was in God's hands. He was at peace with God. He was at rest with God. He lived in Sabbath with God. 
brothers and sisters, whether you believe it or not, God loves you. And he is going to watch over you every day. And he's going to take care of all things. And as much as you think that you are in control of your life, he is. And he rests with you. Knowing that the Almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, holds you in his hand. And he will never let you go. You are at rest. You are at peace. You are at Sabbath with God. May we go home today with the Reformation. Yes. The stubbornness of German Lutherans, right? Yes. The, the teachings, you know, the hardcore teachings where we'll never be moved. <laughs> Maybe even more. The relationship that you have with the Almighty God, the blood of Jesus Christ, that says, stop. Let's stand and join together in our next hymn.